right, this is going to be my second attempt on t discussing how to calculate the percent composition of an element in a compound. It's actually a fairly straightforward skill, but in the previous attempt, I accidentally used, um, for one of our examples of aluminum, I used the wrong mass of aluminum. I was looking at a sheet with tired eyes and I saw 29.98 grams instead of 26.98 grams, so that throws off all of the answers. So rather than just uh, live with that mistake, I'm gonna go back and redo this video quickly for you. All right, calculating the percent composition of an element in a compound is a pretty straightforward skill if you have calculated the percent of anything in your lifetime or throughout school. So for this, the very first skill you need to have is that ability to calculate the molar mass of a compound. If you don't currently know how to do that, that is something you're going to need to go back and work on um, prior to attempting this next level. All right, and then from there, you'll calculate the percent composition of each element using the following little equation here. So the first thing you wanna do is take the total mass of the element in the compound. If there is more than one atom of an element in a compound, you will need to do a little bit of multiplication there, and then divide that by the total mass of the compound. Because this is a percent, you're going to take that fraction and multiply it by 100 and report your answer as a percentage. And then all of your percentages for this chemistry class will be rounded to the hundredths place um, without exception. All right, so the first example that we're going to walk through is the example of water. Now when you're setting this up, again, we're just going to break it down into the two elements, the first being hydrogen. So we have two hydrogen atoms in a compound of water, and each hydrogen atom has a mass of 1.01, .01, and we're going to take that and divide it by the molar mass of water, which is 18.02, and multiply that times 100. I'm creating these videos right now from my home, and I currently have children in the background, my phone is going off, and my cat will not leave me alone. So I apologize for any extra distractions that's in this video in comparison to normal. Um, our total, when we plug that into the calculator, so 2 times 1.01 .01 divided by 18.02 times 100, we get 11.21%. Now there's two ways for us to figure out the percent composition of oxygen. So this one was for hydrogen. One very simple thing is we could take 100 Kitty, stop. Minus 11.21. And that's going to give us a percentage of 88.79%. Um, because the total, the total percentages have to equal 100 every single time we do this. The other option is to just go ahead and set this up similar to what we did with hydrogen. And that is to take 16 divided by 18.02 and then multiply that answer times 100. And that will also give us our 88.79%. So two ways to do the same thing. It's nice if you go through and do everything taking the mass divided by molar mass times 100, and then at the end you add them all together, they should all equal 100. All right, this was the reason I'm redoing the video, and that is because in the original video I had accidentally stated that the mass of aluminum was 29.98, and it was just a me reading things too quickly and probably being a little bit tired when I was doing that. This should be fairly straightforward now. The total mass of aluminum carbonate is 233.99 grams per mole, and the percent of aluminum would therefore be calculated by taking 2 times 26.98 divided by that molar mass times 100. And I'm going to do that really quickly on my calculator. And I get a percentage of 23.06. All right, and then for carbon, there are actually three carbons in that compound. So we're going to do 3 times 12.01 divided by 233.99, and then times 100, 
would be 15.398, but we're rounding to the hundredths place. We're going to round that to 15.40. And again, at this point, if we wanted to just add those together and subtract that from 100, we can. I'm going to go ahead and follow through on the math here. 9 times 16 divided by 233.99 times 100 gives me 61.54. Now when I add all of those together, I should get uh, 100. Sometimes because of rounding, you won't get exactly 100, but that is the goal you're shooting to get as close to 100 as possible in these percentages. All right, that's as easy as it is. Again, a couple of skills that are necessary. Number one, reading the table of atomic masses accurately is super helpful, which I obviously made a mistake on that earlier. Um, and then being able to calculate the molar masses accurately will influence your ability to be successful in this concept. All right, good luck. And as always, email me with questions or um, heads up if you notice that I've made a mistake on this video.